Absolutely. This is uh, basically I start off with some people have different schools of thought about that. Um, like some people will start off with the darkest, some people the lightest, other people have the lightest and the darkest. I tend to start off with a mid tone for me, which is about like W2. Uh, it's a warm gray two. This is a warm gray one. So basically I start off with a few darker areas. Now I'm kind of blending them out with a lighter gray. And now I'm sort of noticing that I'm losing the contrast I thought I had, which sometimes happens. And different papers react a different way. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll uh, go back in now with a warm gray three, which is the darkest shade yet. And I'll darken up those areas that I kind of thought washed away because these blend really well. You can almost blend away a darker shade almost completely, if you, uh, which is good. It's very forgiving that way. But uh, now I'll go back in. I, I tend to like a little bit of a darker nose. So I'll kind of like build that up. Now I'm going to go back in with the cheeks a little bit. Did you have a set of one gray I do. I mean, I, I tend to stay, for flesh tones, I stay within anywhere from, like, uh, warm gray zero, which is a good blending marker. I don't like the regular warm, uh, just zero, uh, like, no color blending markers, because I find that they just look like I spilled alcohol on it. Whereas if it's a warm gray zero, it's at least still in the tone that I, I, I'm using. And you can kind of see here, like, I'm kind of creating some more shadows. I usually get pretty dark around the eyes, like it's heavy eye, eye shadow. I'm kind of going into where the hair will overlap anyway, but I don't really care because it's a, it's a stylistic choice. I mean, sometimes I'll just, you know, make it just totally like it's covering. In this case, I'm kind of letting it show through a little bit. So, uh, let's see. I'll usually put a little bit of warm gray actually in the white part of the eye too, actually, because it looks a little strange sometimes when it's just 100% white. So I'll take a, yeah, so I'll usually take a, Take a zero. I'll just kind of hit, hit a little bit. This this area is a little more in shadow, so I'll hit all the white. Here it's a little bit more in the light, so I'll just I'll still leave a hot spot. But see, that already makes it look a lot more natural. Um, I'll go back now. I'll go in with, uh, with the warm gray zero as well, and just kind of continue blending this uh, some of these areas out a little bit so they're not so harsh. Sometimes I like there to be a little bit of a difference, even though it's a woman's face and I want it to be soft. Wonder Woman's a little bit more of an Amazon, so she's tougher. I create more of a jawline. Gives her a little bit more of a, of a strength and a look. I do. Yeah, I mean, I usually, a lot of people, you know, the traditional way to eat comics is with pro quills. I still like the, 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 the play I get with markers, so I just will beef it up by going over it a few times and creating like multiple, I'll, I'll make multiple passes. I would do it now, but I don't want to have the black ink smear, but uh, usually you want just to dry a little bit. But um, yeah, I'll usually just go over and create the line weights by just going over it a few times, and I have more flexibility that way. now to kind of give the lips more of a darker look. Kind of also again hit the eyes again with a little more sh eye shadow. Oh, I, I've seen, yeah, I've seen guys do, uh, um, um, a guy named uh, Tim Sale does that too, actually. He uses the ink wash. You know, I, I've been meaning to try that out, actually. I'm just very uh, paranoid about having little puddles of, uh, <laughs> of stuff next to me. It's always like, uh, it's a bit of a nerve-wracking uh, process to do it that way. But, uh... Now I'm hitting it with the cool gray for the brunette hair. It gives a nice contrast. 